Oh, yeah, we are freaking uh, at the Freakers Ball right here on RealLibertyMedia.com. Once again, it's Friday night. Welcome, everybody, out there on this September 6, 2019. September 6, 9 6, that's a 69. Backwards for those of you that look at those kind of numeric things. <laughs> anyway, welcome to everybody, uh, and and hopefully you're all here in the chat too. So I know some of you are, some of you are wherever listening, but that's okay. But uh, if you're on the RealLibertyMedia.com website, there on the Freakers Ball show page, you're in the right spot. That's the best place to be. You get the video, you can you got the chat right there. Everything's there. It's cool. You can just just be part of the party. If you're out there on the audio, uh, which you can also still be in the chat there, especially if uh, maybe you're on rlmradio.xyz. Yeah, uh, we got the chat there as well as the audio. So welcome to those audio listeners from there. Or maybe you uh, saw the messages on Twitter, Minds.com. Maybe you're listening in live on Freedoms, freedomsnetwork.com or realliberty.org. Welcome to all y'all. Come on over to the chat and say hi and howdy if you're not here already but if you are here go ahead and say hi and howdy or howdy and hi whatever you like i'm not picky <laughs> it was grimner moose girl will be calling in uh, shortly i would assume uh, she's there in the chat so uh, we, we know that much um brandy no that was somebody else man uh anyway um <laughs> Let me say hi to the folks here in the chat tonight because we got a group. We got a nice group of folks here. We got the barman and uh, the beetle. We got Mr. Cowboy Tech. How you doing there? Myself and the Moose Girl are there in the list. The chatters a list. Mr. DC down from Texas way. Uh, the Asmodeus Asmo Chelsea Miss Gramsy. Uh, we got the Ivy Doncy and Java Doctor and Meister Meister Booster Brow Woody as he's called, uh, the Pondergander, the Poopster, Prince, who did their show last night, Poopster and Prince, Power Hour, uh, check it out on, on, on the podcast, if you missed it, it's there, all, all the podcasts are up there, on RealLibertyMedia.com, yes, on the internet, radio, on the tune in, Vinny, all those places, uh, we got Rob Works, Mr. Rob Works, who's presently Texan, Maybe changing soon. Mr. Rome's with us tonight. Yes, indeed. Uh, Vanna White, she is our one of our, our, our hot bots there. <laughs> Vinny himself, who also did his show earlier today. A ponder gander. Uh, the weather dork bot that uh, gives you the weather and does a couple other things, but not, not too much else. Uh, we have we have with us Phantom <laughs> CC66. That's uh, what? Coin something or the other 66. Choskira, Miss Circle, the lovely Miss Circle, over there in Denmark. Uh, the Cyborg Noodle. Uh, we, have, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not really familiar with Doctor M D A M D M A M D, but uh, I think you must be new. So uh, welcome, Doctor. It's always good to have a doctor in the house. Maybe. <laughs> we got Ed Sim and Frumpy and Gromit and Jew Zeus. Uh, yeah, Jesus, yes, indeed. We got JJ's and Kiss and uh, Matt, WJ2002. The Pone Saucer, uh, the real Donnie Wu. Yes, real. The real one. No fakes here. We got Mr. Psy Puppet and Smart Ass, the little AI bot, and uh, Leasley, but and lastly, but not leastly, uh, the holiest Roger. Now, I don't know where Moose Girl went. She was just here. Somebody pinged that Moose Girl for me. Ping Moose Girl. Let's try this here. Ping a ling, ping a ling, moose, moose, moose. There she is. Oh, there she is. Ha ha ha. Firefox update. Oh, Water Fox, whichever. Uh, so she should be ready to call at any moment now and uh, tell us about her day, her week, her life, what's going on out there in lovely Wisconsin. Uh, but from my end of things, it, uh, it's been a nice kind of day here, nice kind of week. It's been warm. It's been rather much on the warm side, but apparently that's supposed to change starting tomorrow as there's been a uh, high-pressure system parked over the U.S. southwest, and that apparently is moving away. 
And it's a good time for it to move away because I would like some cooler days. It uh, makes it a little difficult to do much outside when it's in the 90 plus range in the afternoons, which I, I don't I can't do anything in the morning, you know. I mean, I can, but I, I choose not to. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not a good morning. And by morning, I mean before 1 p.m. So, um, <laughs> Oh, yeah. So, anyway, yeah. So, and after 1 p.m., that's when it starts, when the heat really starts kicking in on these hotter days, because we are still in summer for another one, two, two and a half weeks, something like that. Oh, yeah, two weeks for sure. Oh, just, just a little over two weeks. Yeah, that will be the end of summer uh, there on September 20th, 21st. Oh, it says here September 23rd. Is the September equinox? Is that right? Can that possibly be right? September 23rd? I thought it was either the 20th or the 21st. What the hell do I know? Hey, Moose. Hola. Hola. How are you? I'm okay. Good. That's good to hear. I just turned up very loud. What is? I was turned up very loud on my speakers. All right, so you hear me? Everything sounds all right? Oh, well, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, that's good. Okay, I'm on, I'm on a whole new setup here today. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I'm using a different headset. It's a USB headset. Okay. And uh, so I got everything running through the voice meter okay. program. And I spent I spent several hours. Cool. I spent several hours getting everything set up and nice. tested this week. Uh, uh, got on there with, with Flash somebody for a couple hours talking to him. Uh, help me do the sound checks and stuff, so. Oh, cool. Kudos to Flash. <laughs> yeah, man. Awesome. Yeah, good. Good, good. So, cool. Yeah. Okay. All right, so uh, how's it going? It's going, you know, hanging in there. Made yeah. it through another week. Uh, that's always a bonus. That is a bonus. <laughs> always, you know. Oh, look there, Hansel uh, has joined us, too. Oh, wow. Oh, how wonderful. I know, isn't it? Oh. It is. <laughs> so wonderful. Oh, man. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, no, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. Good. Yeah, I've, been wanting cool. to sell, I, I've been wanting to sell a little silver, you know. And, yeah. Because uh, it's, cause it's, it went up over $19 there. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then, but today it was back down in the eighteen, eighteen fifty, eighteen thirty range. Yeah. But, uh, I, my my silver guy, I called him on uh, Tuesday or something like that, and he didn't have much cash on hand. People are selling. Nobody's buying. Da 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 da. Anyway, yeah. so so I called him this morning and he said, "Well, I got a little bit. I can't. I can't. I can't buy much off you. Whatever. <laughs> but I'll buy it at nineteen dollars. So he's paid me <laughs> over spot." Which is which is really cool that he's going to pay me over spot. Oh yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I ran over and sold him a few coins and got a little bit of cash. <laughs> cool. Yeah, it's it's just nice. It's because it's so easy. You just walk in there and here's some coins, here's some money. That's it. There's no no anything else. Good. Yeah, yeah. Well, some of those coin shops. I don't know if you where you sell at, but uh, some of them are really. Snoopy. Oh yeah. On all and your shit, man. And I, I get, what's that? They're cheap. Well, they're cheap, but they're also very into your business. Yeah. You know, they want to know everything about you. Show me your IDs. We got the cameras up here and big signs. Right. Telling you. Yeah, it gets like ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, none, none of that. None of that. So it's, good. Good. Yeah. Anyway, so awesome. he'll have he'll have more money on on Monday or Tuesday or something. He said so. I'll go oh, okay, back. cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So, let's see here. What? I gotta just look up a story real quick. Oh, all right, all right. I don't know if you've heard about this, these vaping deaths or not. I hear about the things they're blaming vaping on. Right. Right. Okay, so apparently. 
And let me look at a different article, because some people don't like Daily Mail. Blah, blah, blah. Well, there's, there's t- I probably have. I, 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 I probably have some in, like, last week. Oh, okay. Week before. Okay, so anyway, subscribers, fuck you. I, you know, I think I'm I already... Not subscribing. I think I already talked about them. Did we talk about last week? I, I don't know. Maybe last week or the week before. I don't remember talking about Oh, maybe you did talk about it. Maybe on Monday. Yeah, no, I, I don't know. Well, whatever. Um, but go ahead. Let's, let's throw us a story up there. Okay, so here, this is the Daily Mail. I mean, it's been all over the Internet. It's, you know, it's been on my local news. Okay. So now, anyway, so... um. Vaping has killed four people and left 450 sick because of a deadly new lung disease. Health crisis linked to e-cigarettes has now spread to 33 states. The CDC has urged all people to stop the habit. Um, Indiana and Minnesota health officials each confirmed one death from mysterious lung illness in each of their respective states on Friday. Um, On Friday, the CDC said that there are now 450 cases of lung illnesses being investigated under suspicion than be, be caused by vaping. Uh, duh, duh, duh. Right, duh, so duh, far, 215 cases have been confirmed. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention have dramatically expanded their investigation. Does it, does it uh, say anything there, in there about black market THC pods? It doesn't in this one. I think they're they're okay. leaning. Up, they, at first, they tried to blame it on the THC cartridges. Right. But now they're going towards e-cigarettes, and they're saying there's some kind of vitamin E liquid that's put in there that's causing this. Um, vitamin E? I'm not, it, that's what I heard yesterday. All right. Let me link this one, and then I'll link this other one here. Yeah, okay. But anyway, um, let's see here. Anyway, um, this is my local news station from today. Okay. Uh, The the headline is, New Grant intends to help communities fight vaping epidemic. (laughs) So now apparently they're calling this an epidemic. Right. And, you know, I'm not sure what the fuck to think about it, but apparently there's some people that are filling their own cartridges or something. I don't know. And they're putting bad shit in there, so I don't know. And then there's a question on today's poll on, on WEAU. Should Wisconsin ban flavored e-cigarettes? I don't know. No, no, uh, they should not. They're no. always... They're okay, always... so here's the vitamin E story. This is from WEAU as well, but it's from it's a CNN story. Yeah. That's on my local news station. Health officials, vitamin E chemicals, key focus in vaping illness investigation. Well, so they're blaming it on, or they're, they don't. I don't think they really fucking know. I think they're just like they say here. It's the key focus. They don't know for sure if that's what is causing this. And then here, they're this is where they're talking about the cannabis ones in this story. Yeah. So now, to, now today they're saying, oh no, it's e-cigarettes. So I don't know. I mean, uh, fuck them. They just, they this just... is going fucking viral. I mean, I think I would say that Michigan apparently banned flavored e-cigarettes for the children. Right. <laughs> okay. Here it says THC found in Wisconsin vaping cases that led to illnesses, but this was August 29th. Right. Now they're saying, oh, it's the e-cigarettes. So they didn't know from the get-go. I think right away they were gun- They were like, oh, yeah, we can get- go against mar- THC oil now. We can make THC oil look bad now. Anything it's like, to no, ban now whatever. they're changing their tune and saying it's e-cigarettes. Right. So it's the products that contain the nicotine, right? Right. So, yeah, I mean, that's what you do, Mr. Bro. You know, I haven't had an issue so far, knock on wood. I mean... Uh, you know, when people are dying from mysterious lung diseases, though, that is not a good thing. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's chemtrails. It might be. Yeah. I mean, who knows? I don't know, but right. You know, uh, Rome's. You, you remember? 
uh, back in the 70s, well, you may, you may not remember, you're too young, but uh, in the 70s, they started putting paraquat in the weed. Uh, I heard about that. Yeah. So, um, people started getting I mean, sick. I was a kid, but I, I, yeah. I, since yeah. I've been an adult, I've heard about that happen. And, that, and, that and happened. Pe- people started getting really sick off of it. And, and they, right. could just, they could just say, oh, look, marijuana makes you sick. Right, you know, that's what's going on here, I think. Yeah, Same exact thing. See, Philip Morris and shit, they don't want to have people not buying actual pre-rolled cigarettes. They don't want you vaping it. No, no. No. I mean, a friend of mine is an electrician, and so there was this dog track in Hudson, right? Right. And they shut it down. It's been sh- shut down and hasn't run, been run for over 20 years, right? Okay. So they, they tore it down in the, the area that, so Phillips Plastics bought this land. And they're be putting a huge facility in, and it's just to make Juul, Juul, Juul cigarettes, or whatever they're called. Okay. I mean, this is, I guess these Juuls are getting huge. Yeah, yeah, I've heard about the Juuls. Uh, it's supposed to be one, one pod is equal to uh, a whole pack of cigarettes. Or something like that. But I, I'm not on the bandwagon yet. I mean, I, 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 I don't know. Maybe I don't know it is how. better because you're not smoking cigarettes and it doesn't stink like cigarettes do and it doesn't, you know, you don't have to smoke. But. Yeah. I don't know. You know, I'm just used to smoking a cigarette. You know, hey. I, I don't know. Meister Brow. I, mean, I, I know it's going out of fashion, but. Uh, my, my, Meister Brow, four out of five doctors recommend cool cigarettes. <laughs> I don't know what Virginia Slims. I don't know what they recommended, but they recommended the doctors were recommending cigarettes. Yeah, I don't know, bro. It does <laughs> seem odd. I mean, it, it people have been vaping for. It seems odd. It, it just seems odd that all of a sudden this is in the headline. I mean, it's been big. It's like now they're they're whoever's handing out grants to states so they can make committees and combat this epidemic. It's like, are you kidding me? All right. I mean, come on. So I don't know what to believe on this one. It's it's just so new. And like I said, you know, a week ago, they were trying to blame it on THC oil cartridges, right? Right. Now, today, they're saying, oh, it's e-cigarettes. So they, basically, they do not know. Right. It does make sense, Mr. Brown, that they're going after vaping. They want to put a, shed a bad light because they realize how many people are doing it now. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's, there's something fishy on this. I just do. Well, I've, you know, thought, I, I've thought about it, but I've personally never vaped anything, so. Yeah. I, I, I can't. I not. mean, even though vape, vape is, it's nice because for concerts, it's so, so you can be very discreet, especially if it's THC oil. Yeah. But I still want to smoke some fucking killer grass, <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't want yeah. I'm not ready to just go, go cross over to just fucking vape. Yeah, you I, know, it's yeah. just I like smoking grass. You know, I like smoking a joint. I like smoking a bong hit. You know, whatever. You, you know, know I, I've I've seen them going after. They say, "Oh, now we got to worry about secondhand vaping." And it's like bullshit. What? That's bullshit. It's vapor, and you can't no, you can't even get a contact buzz on it. Secondhand like, vaping. This this guy that didn't know about vaping apparently, he yeah. thought that you could do like what do they call that a shotgun, right? You can't do that with vape. Yeah. It's not it's not the same thing. People are fucking clueless, some some people, you know. Yeah. These are people that are not weed smokers. Oh, that don't, don't it, that but. don't stop them from voicing their opinions. Exactly. <laughs> Come on, dude. All right, Moose, let's hit hit some jams here. Just some tunes. I got a story. Well, I got a subject I want to discuss. All right. That I was talking about with some people at the bar just lately and yeah. Okay, we cool. Listen to and we'll be back. All right. This Alrighty is then. Uncle Ted, the Nuge. Oh, yeah. Tres hombres. That's, uh, that's uh, ZZ Top there doing a track called uh, Burger Man. Yes, indeed. Before that, a uh, Musco request led uh, Zeppelin with back to Black Black Dog from uh, Live at Madison Square Garden in 1973. Kicked it off there with Ted Nugent doing Land of a Thousand Dances. 
Yeah, it's a great track, man. <laughs> oh, good stuff, good stuff. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, anyway. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. And so I'm at the bar tonight having my fish fry, you know, my right. couple of beers. Okay. Before the show. Okay. And there's a woman there who's from North Dakota, and she apparently knows the owner of the place because he's sitting down talking. He's an older man. He's in his 70s or whatever, you know. Yeah. Anyway, um, she starts talking about how a cop pulled her over today in Minnesota because she's driving from Minnesota to come to Wisconsin. All right. And, uh, you know, they have the no cell phone law there, right? Okay. No, it can't be on your phone. While you're driving. You can use Bluetooth, which, by the way, Bluetooth is just as distracting as sure. holding the phone in your hand, right? Absolutely. So we, I think we talked about that. But anyway, um, the cop pulls her over and starts giving her a hard time. And she's got North Dakota plates. She's got a North Dakota driver's license. And he's expecting her to know that it's now hands-free in Minnesota. And this just took place um, August 1st. Right? Okay. And she's like, I'm sorry, officer. Um, I didn't know. You know, I'm from North Dakota. You know? Right. Well, blah, 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 blah. Well, this is your lucky day, you know, because I'm going to let you off with a warning or whatever. All right. And she's like, you know, he should not say that crap. Like, oh, it's your lucky day. I'm like, exactly, you know. All right. And she's like, he was totally being a dick. And I'm like, that's not surprising, you know. Yeah. So anyway, we started talking a little bit. Or she was talking more about cops and shit and blah, blah, blah. And, um. Then the old timers were talking about back in the day when the cop would pull him over for drinking and driving, and they just let him keep driving home. Sure, sure. <laughs> like just go home, get home, and don't drive it anymore tonight. You know that's not how it is nowadays. No, not at all. No, and so anyway, um, which I am not a I'm not an advocate of drinking and driving. I think it's like the most selfish thing that anybody can do. Okay, well, I'm drive that, drunk. But it's, okay? it's not good. But I don't know about the most. Most self. It's one of them because you're putting everyone else's life at risk when you're out there driving drunk. Well, right? It's, it's like, stupid. It's, you know, uh, it's a stupid thing to do. It is. So anyway, and then I we I said something else about how I said I do a radio show and we talk about this subject often. And I said they we did a show a few years ago how or a, a story a few years ago how they they hire they won't hire you if you have too high of an IQ. Right. And she's like, really? I'm like, yeah. And she goes, oh, I get it. So they can easily mold them. And I go, yeah, it's usually the bullies or the people that were bullied in high school that become cops. Because the bully wants to keep bullying people. And the one that was bullied wants to now be the bully. And it's a payback thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, a little revenge thing going on. Right. You know, I'll show them I'm a badass now. I'm a cop now. You know, blah, blah, blah. Right, right. So anyway, then now in Lake Halley, and even in Eau Claire, but not as much in Eau Claire. That, but anyway, their new tactic now is they don't have any lights on the outside of the vehicle. The cops don't. Yeah. They don't have the blue and red lights on the top, you know. Yeah, they put it in the and grill. And they don't have them. They in and some of them sometimes they're in the grill. Right. But nowadays they're inside the vehicle. The lights. Oh, okay. So you can't see, tell if it's a cop. I mean, you know, back in the day, cop cars were clearly marked. You could see them. You you knew it was a cop, right? Sure. Well, nowadays what they're doing is they're getting these cop vehicles that look like an average vehicle, like an SUV, like a black SUV or a white SUV. Or, you know, they get like um, Dodge Chargers or whatever. Right? Yeah, yeah. Or Challengers or whatever the fuck. And they're painted white, but then... The writing, the writing on the side is in white as well. So Lake Halley has these cop cars that are white, and the writing that says Lake Halley Police is also in white. So you can't see these. You don't know that well, it's a cop right away. Right. Not unless you look really close and go, "Oh, it says Lake Halley Police." But it's a, and then they'll do a black car with black lettering, 
saying Eau Claire police or whatever. You know what I mean? Okay. You can't tell. Cop cars are basically unmarked. They're becoming more and more unmarked by the day. Okay? I don't right. know if people are aware of this, if you've ever seen this in your communities yet or not. But I saw one. Okay? You can't tell it's a fucking cop car. There's no lights on the outside. There's no writing on the outside. Like I said to this lady, I said they should be a black car with white lighting and hu- white lettering and huge letters. Police. Right? Right. But, because this is bullshit. This undercover crap and this, it's it's bullshit. Okay? I agree. It's it, it's it's so underhanded that you don't you know you don't even give a person a fucking chance. You know what I mean? No, no. I mean they don't even give you a chance anymore. They don't want to And then to I have told this story about that guy in St. Paul that got pulled over because the one guy was talking about how he he has a but if you have a open or a carry permit, well, you don't need a permit if, for open carry. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, if you if you have open carry, if you are, and a cop pulls you over, you're supposed to stick your hands out the window. Oh, like, right. Yeah. To show that you don't have, you're not holding the weapon. Right. You know, and then the cr- cop will approach the car or whatever. But the the instance in St. Paul where the girl the the girlfriend in the car was filming it. Right. The guy was opening. I have a gun in this car. You know, he obviously wasn't holding the gun. Right? Yeah. It was like somewhere in the car. I don't know where. Okay. I can't remember. Okay. But anyway, he got shot and killed. You know? Because? Because he had a gun in the fucking car. Right. You know, and the cop was fucking scared. Well, they all are. Yeah. They're scared. So anyway, and you know, the thing about this is, okay, people that are carrying guns... They, you know, hopefully, you know, yeah, there's psychos out there that get guns. I'm not talking about those people. Right. I'm talking about Grimner. If you had a gun in your car and you were traveling with it and you got pulled over, you know, blah, 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 that type of thing. That's what I'm talking about. You know, the average person. Yeah. You know, not a psycho, not a fucking murderer, you know, nothing, no one with bad intent. Okay. And so... What they well, the one lady said was well, in North Dakota she knows that someone got pulled over, and the cop had them step out of the vehicle and then they went into the car to retrieve the firearm. Okay. You know, so they do it a little bit different depending on what state you're in, but you know, I just you know my point is, a normal person knows you know they're not going to shoot a cop. Okay, they're just yeah, not going to no. do it. Right, right. They don't want to. That's not why they have a gun, you know. And cops wear bulletproof vests, so the only way to really kill a cop is to shoot him in the fucking head, right? Yeah. Unless they have a helmet on, which I don't know if those are bulletproof, but I'm assuming they are. Probably know? Kevlar, yeah. Yeah, and so, um, you know, unless you're really fucking stupid or psycho, you're not gonna fucking use that fire that gun on that cop. You know? Right. And it's just ridiculous. It's just, you know, oh, why is it why is it so hard for an average person to have a gun, but yet you got these motherfucking murderer jackbooted thugs running around fucking shooting at the wind. You know, if, 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 you know, they heard a car backfire, so they fucking shot the lady in her pajamas, right? Right. You know, come on. You know, and you can tell that they do hire low IQ people for these jobs. Absolutely. It's just getting ridiculous. It's like they're so undercover now that it's like they might as well not even they might as well all be undercover and not be wearing an actual costume anymore. You yeah. know? Yeah, I agree. I agree. I mean, so I'm driving to down downtown. You know, I live in Eau Claire here. It's not a major metropolitan area by any stretch. You know, yeah, well, it's, it's not small, but it's not big. You got like 30,000 there? It's No, it's like 60,000 people 60, in Eau Claire. And then but you got surrounding, you got Altoona, which is right next to Eau Claire, and then, which is like 40,000. And then you got Chippewa, which is like 40,000. or whatever. You know what I mean? Okay. So anyway, it's, but it's still not a major metropolitan area by any stretch. So I'm driving downtown to my, to my normal route. 
and I see this cop's got this minivan pulled over, and it's weird where they're, where they're pulled over because it's like there's this turn that you take, and you don't have to. There's no stop sign there. Okay. Right. Okay. And it turns, but there's no stop sign, and no one ever uses their blinker there because there's a stop sign on the other where there's a straight road coming through. They have a stop sign, right? Okay. But anyway, he was just he had the, the vehicle pulled over, and he was on the passenger side. He was. In the pass, looking in the passenger side window. All right. And as I drove by, I could tell he was arguing with the driver of the car, though. So, but he was on the passenger side arguing, and there was a passenger in the car too. Okay. And I don't know what he was bitching though. The co- I could tell the cop was just bitching her out, right? And he had a bulletproof vest on and shit, because you can see when they have a bulletproof vest on, right? Right. Yeah. They're both- He's just bitching. I'm like, whoa, that looks intense. When I drove by, I'm like, that looked really intense, you know? Mm-hmm. So then I went and got my cigarettes or whatever, and then I come start coming back that way. And this is like ten minutes later. He still has her pull over, and he's still bitching at her. And I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, what the hell? What did she do, or what did they do that was so got you so fired up, you know? And if she did something that's so bad and got you so fired up, why aren't you just writing a ticket and letting her go on her way? It was like he had her there. He was just bitching her out. I'm like, I would have said, dude, I got to be somewhere. Are you, either give me a ticket or let me keep going where I need to go. You know what I mean? Right, sure. So if they think they're just, they can control you. They think they have you under, they, well, they take for granted that they, they do assume that you do not know how to talk to a cop. You do not know your rights. You don't know shit. That's what they think, right? Exactly. But then they, if you pull over somebody that does know their shit, then they're all like, whoa, 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 you can't say that to me, you can't, no, that's not, they, because they themselves don't know the rights of the people either. They only know how to be a fucking cop. Right? Yeah, right. They don't know how to handle someone that doesn't, they, they know how to handle somebody that doesn't know how to talk to them, but they don't know how to handle somebody that does know how to talk to them and does know their rights. Yeah. You know, that's how that's how the guy I think got shot in St. Paul. He was trying to say, Hey, I have I have a right to have this fire this gun, you know? Yeah. I mean you know, the cop was like, oh, you know, they, they, they kinda lose their shit, you know what I mean? Right, right. They kinda get all bent out of shape when you challenge them. And especially <laughs> when it's the truth. When it's the actual law, dude. Yeah, I know. Exactly. You know, I have a right to travel here, buddy. <laughs> And I'm not going to sit here and listen to you bitch at me for 20 minutes. Either give me a fucking ticket or let me fucking drive away. Or I'm just going to fucking drive away, bitch. You don't say bitch, maybe, but, you know. Yeah. Because that'll piss them off. Oh, yeah. But and if you drive away, then they'll they'll come gunning for you. They'll, so. do, they'll say, oh, it was a high-speed chase or whatever, something. They'll, whatever. They'll, they'll, you know, they'll call fucking four other squads. Right, and they'll all come you know, pointing their guns at you. Right. Yeah. And it's just like, come on. I mean, it's just getting really, really just underhanded. That's what I, I word I used tonight when I was talking to that lady. I'm like, it's just so underhanded and so like, and it's like, yeah. You know, you don't even have a chance hardly anymore. You know what I mean? Sure. I mean, she's from North Dakota. She's talking on her phone. The fucking cop, the state was a state trooper in Minnesota. Oh, I see a fucking criminal right there. You know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? North Dakota. The law just came into effect August 1st. It's been like a little over a month, and she's from North Dakota. And you expect her to know that they're hands free now. You know? It's like. Right. I mean, it's just like it's it's just getting ridiculous. I mean, oh, it yeah. can go on and on. I right, no doubt, but, no doubt. But it's just like it really, it's just it pisses me off. You know, it really fucking does. Sure. Because they use these underhanded tactics, and they it, they coerce people. Like to me, at Blue Ox, when they have the undercover cops in there that are out of uniform, trying to fit in and look regular, that is bullshit. Yeah. That is coercion. That is underhanded tactics there. If you're going to be in there, you better be wearing a fucking costume, cunt. Don't be <laughs> yeah. go- acting like, oh, I'm a hippie. 
and then go up to people and bust them for smoking weed? How fucking lame of a person are you? Really, dude? And you know, you, the worst thing about it, not the worst thing, but it's kind of a good thing, but they don't give you a ticket. They just take your weed and your, your, your pipe. Yeah. It's like, uh, excuse me? Just that's pure, fucking theft, dude. Pure thievery. You know, it's, it's, it's plain and simple theft. You see me smoking weed, and you know weed's not as harmful as alcohol even, because you've been on the scene of alcohol-related crashes where people were fucking killed. You're telling me you're going to come in here and bust people for smoking fucking weed. Are you fucking kidding me, dude? Like, get a fucking life, buddy. You know, how can you in your right mind do that? When you know damn well that weed is like <coughs> on the same level as aspirin, dude. I mean, come on. You're against people feeling good? You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. How can you be at... How can you sleep at night? You they know? Have, they have no conscience, so... No. And so I just... I just... That was my little... I just... I thought it was really interesting tonight that other people out there were talking about this. You know what I mean? Like, she was bitching. She was fucking pissed, dude. Yeah. You know, she's like, he pulls me over because I'm on a cell phone. You know, what he could have done was said, oh, well, as of August 1st, we're hands-free here in Minnesota. Now you know. Have a nice day, ma'am. You know. You know what I mean? Right. But no, he had to be a total fucking dick. Yeah. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course he did. Of course, and then and then he had to say, "Oh well, it's your lucky day," Woo-hoo. and she's like, "I wanted to fucking punch the fucker." <laughs> I'm like, "I don't blame you." <laughs> she's like, "He should not have said that." I'm like, "No, he shouldn't have. He was just being a dick by saying that." Yeah, you know, it's your lucky day because I'm not going to give you a ticket. It's like shove it up your ass, pig. Fuck you. Yeah. Don't fucking blow smoke up my ass, motherfucker. You know. Right. Right. It's like, come on, dude. But, I mean, it's interesting that people do, they might not be aware politically or aware of all the other shit, but they are aware and they're pissed off about the cops' tactics lately. You know what I mean? No one's good with it. No one that I know is good with it. Unless you're a cop. Uh, Right. Or an ex-cop. Sure. You know, or you're a mayor of a city, or you're the governor of a state. Right. You care about cops and you're a governor of a state because they fucking do what? Bring money into the state. Right, sure. By being assholes to people. Great. Yeah. Wonderful. You know, they're harassing people that are good people, right? Exactly. You know, and instead of fucking going after the real criminals, they're going after just the average everyday citizen. You know, sure, sure, sure. It's all war. It's all balls to the wall now. It's all like, we'll get whoever. We don't care. You know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We don't give a fuck who it is. We'll shoot women in the alley that are in their pajamas that are obviously unarmed. Right. You know, yeah. actually, that that cop did go to prison, though. But he'll get out in a couple of years for good behavior. Sure. Then they'll and hire him back. He a woman in cold blood in her, in her alley in her pajamas. And he's going for, I think it was seven years. He'll get out in two. I guarantee you that. Yeah. He will. Because he's an ex-cop and blah, 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 and all this shit. You know, all this bullshit that doesn't work for the average everyday person. Of course not. It wouldn't work for you and I in court. No. If you and I had murdered that woman in the alley in her pajamas, we would be going to life in prison. Right. Right. But this motherfucker gets off because he was a cop. Yeah, he's got the special little costume, so. Right, so he's special. So that's the message, people. Cops are better than you. They're more special than you. <laughs> they get to get away with murder more than you do. Easily. So, yeah. Yeah. Easily. Oh, I just said easily twice. <laughs> twice. Oh, my God. You probably gave uh, wood... Uh, Vinny a Woody. <laughs> <laughs> his, his, his tail feathers are fluffed up now. Right, his tail feathers are, are fluffed up. 
She can tell, Feller Mitty. That's tell. right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. All right. So anyway, that I don't want to talk about that all night, which okay. we could if we wanted to, right? Sure, sure. But we don't want to. All right. Let's so play some more don't. music. Let's play some more music. Okay. Let's do that, and, and then, we'll be uh, back, people. All right. We're gonna... And thanks for tuning in, everyone, on this freaky Friday night. Yes, indeedy. Yes, indeedy. And we're going to kick it off with a couple of Moose Girl requests right here. Ooh, right on. Starting, right fucking on. Starting with that fish woman. Uh, yeah, we're going to take a little break here in just a little while. Oh, yeah, that's the uh, Hillbilly Moon Explosion. Uh, they're doing uh, Queen of Hearts. Uh, they're, they're a very interesting band. I, I, I listened to a bunch of their, their songs. Uh, uh, but uh, that, That's the one I picked for, for, for the list. I don't know why, but it's a cool tune. Queen of Hearts. Anyway, before that, for the Moose. Hey. For the Moose Girl there, feeding Leroy, doing Tennessee Devil, live at the Blue Ox. She was there in that video. Uh, I was. And that was just a couple months ago, or a month ago, or something like that. June. June, yep. okay, a couple months ago. And we kicked it off there with Samantha Fish, live at the Friday Night Concert Series, Cloverdale, California, on August 31st, 2018. No angels and... Uh, that's true, man. That's true. There are she no... is really amazing, that she, Samantha Fish. She, she is, like, awesome. She is an angel. She is awesome, <laughs> dude. She is just so talented, that girl. I mean, seriously, and she looks so hot. It's just like, you got it going on, girl. She do. Yeah, take that all the way to me, honey. Yeah, well. Well, when you got that much talent, you know, and you, you, you have, like, blues musicians, famous blues musicians inviting you on stage with them and shit. You know, that's going to be, you know, a huge thing. Oh, absolutely. Not that in that video she was just playing solo, but she's well, been invited on stage with a bunch of huge blues names, you know what I mean? Oh, absolutely, yeah. She, she's oh, a yeah, female. She's awesome. Oh, yeah. They yeah. love her, dude. Yeah, so. She's well-known in the blues, blues world right now. She's up and coming. Oh, yeah. For sure. Oh, so, yeah. Anyway, this is an article. Uh, it's it's funny. Well, it's it, it's funny in a way, but in a way, it's real. It's true. Okay. This is from Higher Perspective website. All right. All right. Uh, from February twenty eighth, twenty nineteen. Okay. And the, the headline of the article is: Sometimes I wish I was a bird. <laughs> like, fly over certain people. People. And shit on their heads. There you go. <laughs> so this is it. That it, and then it says seven signs that you have a toxic person in your life. Oh, okay. And number one is they cannot admit when they are wrong about something. I know those people. If you've begun to notice that a specific someone in your life that you care for doesn't exactly like admitting that they are wrong to you, then this could be an indication that you are with someone extremely negative. Sure, sure. These people think, tend to think that they know everything already and that there is no possible way for them to be wrong. Right. If you find it difficult trying to convince them, educate them, or anything else that justifies their obvious wrongness, then you must consider leaving this person behind. You do not want this kind of attitude around you at all times. No benefit. Right. Number two, they have really huge egos. Negative people really love to boast about themselves a lot, making them seem like they are way better than everyone else than everyone else than they actually are. If you have recognized this about someone, this could be a major indication that they are an extremely negative human being. They will never show pride in anyone else or anything that isn't theirs. You do not need to associate with this behavior or person. Let them build themselves up without you. They do not need the constant boost in self-esteem from others, especially if they do such a good job of doing it themselves. Sure. Right? Yeah. Okay. Number three, they love to interrupt others. Negative people like to not give anyone else the chance to speak, resulting in an onslaught of interruptions while they are trying to talk about something. This kind of relates to them not wanting to admit when they are wrong. So they will do their best to interrupt others in order for them to seem like they know what they are talking about. This is a very ugly behavior, and if you recognize this indication about someone's toxic personality, you may have to consider leaving them behind. Number four, they're very disrespectful. Negative people do not have proper manners or have a proper mentality when it comes to respecting others. As I as stated before, negative people love to feed their ego any chance they can get, and if and for some reason disrespecting others fuels them, 
to be that much more horrible. Most of the time, they would rather much try to brag about themselves compared to talking about other people's successes in life. This is a huge indication that it is time for you to remove this negative person from your life. Number five, they crave attention. If you've begun to notice or have already noticed that a negative person in your life simply loves to draw any form of attention onto themselves, then this is a huge indication that you need to remove this person from your life. Negative people love to take the spotlight spotlight away from others just to have everyone else's eyes on them. There is nothing they are not willing to do in order to get what they want when it comes to being the center of everything or everyone. Number six, they refuse to give you any attention. Negative people have a hard time paying attention to others when it comes to listening. They will often show signs that they are uninterested in whatever you're saying, change the subject to something else, or completely ignore you altogether. This is a huge indication that it's time for you to remove this toxic person from your life. They will find other things or other people to entertain them if you are not interesting enough for them. Number seven, they love playing a victim. Negative people love to play the victim whenever you call them out on horrible things they are doing. They will act like none of what you are saying is true, completely lie about everything that they've said or done, and will act like you were the one that was being a horrible person first. Do not play into this little game of theirs. Instead, realize that there is no way for you to help this person and that they must be removed from your life since they are unwilling to listen, understand, or even respect you. Once again, your happiness comes first in the end. You do not have to watch these people slowly destroy your life over time simply because you don't want to lose them. It may be time for you to purge the negativity from your life and find newer, more positive kind of people to associate with. There you go. So basically, they're assholes. Yeah, basically. Narcissistic, <laughs> probably. Narcissistic, psychopathic assholes. <laughs> Great. Basically, yeah, it's all about them. It's like, look at me, look at me. Yeah. I don't care about you. Aren't I great? You know, right? Aren't I great? They can never admit when they're wrong. They blame other people for all their problems. That's what goes along with that. You know what I mean? They always blame other people. You know, if this didn't happen and that, if this person didn't do that and that person didn't do this, then I wouldn't be in this situation. That type of thing. You know what I mean? Sure, sure. They don't own up to their own shit, basically. So, you know, I just thought it was funny because of the headline. You know, no, I was a bird so I could fly over certain people's heads and take a shit on it, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on. No, let me, oh, I, I didn't link it. Good. Okay. I mean, yeah, you have to, I mean, it sucks having a toxic person in your life sometimes. You know, it depends on the relation. It's it's one thing if it's your spouse or your partner. Mm-hmm. Then that gets really You're closely watching a huge asteroid. Complicated, right? Yeah. But if it's just a buddy or a friend or something, you know what I mean? Then it, they're easily just easily shut off. You're like, you know oh, what, yeah. dude? You suck, basically, in a nutshell. And I can't deal with you no more. You know? Get the fuck away from me. You know what right, I mean? Right, right. Like, don't be bringing your fake shit to me. You know? Sure. I just, people like that, they're not real. They're not authentic. They're not genuine. They're putting on an act. And, Nine times out of ten, they're very insecure people, all right? Yeah. That's part of the reason they have to act like that. And the, the key word being act. They are fucking acting. Yes. They don't think they are. They don't know they are. But that's what it is. It's an act. It's not being genuine and not being real. Because a lot of people have a really hard time getting in touch with that part of themselves. You know? They really do. They have a really hard time, like, realizing, oh, I'm a piece of shit, or I'm a fucking asshole. I better fucking figure out how to not be an asshole. <laughs> they don't think like that, though. Right. They think nothing's wrong with them. There's something wrong with everybody else in the world, okay? Mm-hmm. That's what they think. So, yeah, you have to be smart in your choices, right? Sure, sure. And when you realize someone is like this, you know what you do? You get the fuck out. You leave. Yeah, you, get away from them. You, you're done. You're done. You're like, I can't do this anymore. I'm done. <laughs> and you, yes, I did, Vin. Yeah, you know, what do you mean, wow? It, 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 you can only do so much for a person, all right? And yeah. there's only so much toxic shit a person should have to put up with. If exactly. a person's going to be a fucking dickhead, that's their problem. That's right. not anybody else's problem. 
That's so, on them. you know, don't be, a lot of these people, they don't have many friends because they pissed everyone off that they come in contact with. Yeah. They make people, like, repel them. They they make people not like them because they're not being genuine. And people can pick up on that. You know, they might think they're fooling everybody, but they're not. <laughs> they're not. People can pick up on all that negativity and all that ego, me, 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 me. Shit, people can pick up on that very easily. I just said it again. You did. I just said the word again. All right. Yeah. Well, so yeah. anyway, um, I just thought that was a good article. No, it was good. It, no. I mean, it's short and it's sweet and it comes. It, it's to the point. Exactly. And, you know, it, it, it says it all really in a nutshell. Like, you know, if you're going to be a dickhead, don't expect or be a fake person. Don't expect to have a lot of friends because you're not going to. Sure. You, know, you might have friendships, but they're not going to be long lasting. Or yeah. relationships. Right. Because you, you just can't bullshit a bullshitter. You know, most people can pick up on fakeness. You know? You would hope. Oh, yeah. Some <laughs> people can't. Some people are gullible, and some people fall for their shit. But over time, they realize oh, this person's a fucking phony. This person's not real. This person doesn't mean what they say. This no. person is not real. They're fi- fucking acting. And when they act, they're an asshole. So, you know what? See ya. Later. Bye. Adios. Right? Yep. yep. Don't work for me, dude. Okay, well, you want some news from the future? Yes. Of course <laughs> I would. Uh, I, I I got this earlier t- today, or like early in the morning today. But it's dated tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, it's uh, on the express.co.uk. Asteroid collision with Earth ruled out by NASA. Hours later, it smashes into the Caribbean. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking NASA. All right, so there's an asteroid which came crashing to Earth, and NASA had no idea it was coming, reiterates the need to help we keep a closer eye on the sky why if if you say you see the asteroid there you say it's not coming to earth and then it hits earth (laughs) well what good is your eye your eye is useless (laughs) oh anyway so it says here that the uh, a small asteroid shot towards earth at 14.9 kilometers per second and nasa admitted it did not know it was coming the space rock known as 2019 mo uh, it was just three meters wide and exploded when it hits the planet's atmosphere on the 22nd of July above the Caribbean. But the way it approached unexpectedly reaffirms the need for more eyes on the sky. They, 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 they knew they. <laughs> yeah. See. So uh, I don't know. They said it was. They they saw it and it was no way it was going to hit Earth and then it did. So now we need to look closer. I. I I'm not sure what they think they're going to get. Anyway, NASA, when it first spotted 2019 MO, was about 310,000 miles uh, from Earth, farther out than the orbit of the moon. So they saw it. It was out there past the moon. They said, nah, that's not going to come to Earth. (laughs) Apparently, it says it's here roughly the equivalent of spotting something the size of a gnat from a distance of 310 miles. So uh, anyway, I I, I really, I just thought the... uh, (laughs) <laughs> uh, the whole headline and everything was funny, but the fact that it's also it's dated for tomorrow, uh, which okay, <laughs> okay, yeah, that's, yeah, uh, uh, a, a little, a little, a little interesting there. But on other space news that you might be interested in, um, where did that, where did that one go? Not that Chinese one. There's another Chinese one. Remember that uh, Muppets? Muppets. Spoof, what was it? Dogs what? in space. I do remember that. No, I don't remember that. Oh, I'm sure you you were old. You're old, a bit older than me, so you probably didn't watch any of the Muppets. No, I, I really had no the interest. Dogs in, in space. Look it up, people. After the show, oh, okay. it's funny. Here it is. It's funny stuff. Anyway, uh, go ahead. Grant. Okay, uh, on uh, uh, Newsweek dot com here. Uh, you know China, they they uh, put a, yeah. a, a lunar lander on uh, the dark side of the moon. Oh uh, yeah, they said that. And who yeah, knows yeah. if they actually did it? Do they show pictures? Is they like? Is there well, proof that this actually happened? Well, like, here, really? here's a, here's the story, I, and I, I'm I'm guessing it's true. Okay. I don't know. 
weird gel-like substance found on moon by <laughs> by, by China's lunar rover U, U-2-2. That's Y-U-T-U-2. Okay. Um, so they, they found this stuff. There. It says a, stra- a strange gel-like substance has been found on the surface of the moon by China's lunar rover U-2-2. The material was described as being unusually colored, and according to the state-run newspaper People's Daily, mission scientists are now trying to work out what the hell it is. Uh, U-2-2 rover, part of China's Chang- Chang'e-4 mission, has discovered an unusually colored gel-like substance during ex- exploration activities on the far side of the moon. The discovery was described in more detail in the Chinese publication Our Space as part of U-2-2's drive diary. Uh, Space.com reports the substance was found on the 28th of July during day eight of an exploration mission to a region covered in small impact craters. Uh, So scientists working on the Chang'e-4 mission were about to power down the the rover for a nap when they noticed the crater with with strange material in one of the images set back from the U-2-2's main camera. Uh, some, <laughs> some guy from the drive team uh, saw the gel in the inner edge of the impact crater, our space notes. He contacted mission scientists who decided to postpone the rover's planned route and examine the crater with the material inside. According to our space, the gel's shape and color was significantly different from the surrounding lunar soil. Uh, there have been no updates since the original announcement of the m- mysterious material. But, mysterious material. Uh, but People's Daily said researchers are currently analyzing it. Uh, mis- <laughs> mission- I'm sure they are. Uh, mi- mission scientists are now trying to figure out what the mysteri- mysterious material is. What do you think it is? Now, here's the thing. It, it's It's in an area with impact craters, meaning a crater created by an asteroid or other space rock there hitting the moon. So that gel, that, that bizarre gel, whatever it is, that hit the moon... <laughs> could, it's probably jellyfish. I'm just kidding. Whatever it gel. is. Like, what are we supposed to make of that? Like, come on, people. Well, whatever it is, it, it could could well have come off Why of... Why are they telling us this? Because it's strange. Uh, what, was the, what, what was that movie, The Blob? Wasn't that like a bizarre gel-like thing? Yeah. Remember that movie? Yeah, the yeah, movie? yeah. The blob yeah, that, yeah. Used to, that like scared the shit out of people. That movie <laughs> back in the fifties, apparently, like people would like get so scared that they'd be running out of the drive-through, like you know, it was like at the drive-through, like in the fifties, and the people got so freaked out by that movie. Yeah, I remember I saw it on TV when I was like a kid, like in black and white, and I'm like, this was scary. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like when I first saw, it, I'm like, really. But back in the day, when they didn't do those kind of movies so much, because this is like when these movies were first like coming out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It was 1958, apparently. Um, but it really freaked people out. Apparently, Steve McQueen's in that movie, which I, I, I guess I knew that, but I'm reminded now that he was actually in that movie, Steve McQueen. Right. And uh, it was something. Apparently, my parents talked about it a little bit when I remember when I was a kid. Like, they talked about the blob, like, "Oh yeah, that's a scary movie." <laughs> <laughs> Compared to the freaky movies now, it was not scary at all with the special effects and everything that we have now. You know what I mean? Right, but right. Back in the time, people got really freaked out, and apparently, the creature of the Black Lagoon really freaked people out too. Yes. You know? Yes. I, I, and that's weird, because it, it you watch it, it looks so, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, and of those old movies that like that, uh-huh. I, the one I liked best was Them. Oh, yeah, that is a good one. Yeah, the one with the giant ants. Yes. Yeah, the nuclear ants there in, uh, in L.A. in the basin there. Yeah, you know, and there's all these people who are ta- that are listening to us that have, have never heard of these movies before. Well, know? speaking of odd... <laughs> speaking, it's not speak, that old, but we're old. We're getting there. We're, we're not ancient. We're spe- you know we're we're over fifty. So you know. Spe- speaking of odd and interesting critters, yes. And you may have heard this story already. It came out this week. Okay. The Loch Ness monster 
is probably just a giant eel. And <laughs> I, 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 I don't buy that. No, no, I call I call bullshit on it too. But uh, yeah, this this is what this clown these these clowns I guess I should say say. Uh, researchers now believe the mythic monster Loch Ness, uh, Nessie, um, may not be a prehistoric vestige, but giant, meaty, delicious eels. Delicious eels. The scientists from New Zealand ventured to the UK and confirmed once and for all the origins of the fabled creature, ruling out the possibility of it being other, uh, also appetizing, aquatic creatures. As part of their quest, they examined DNAs from the monster's namesake lake in the Scottish Highlands. Their analysis showed no signs of any large animals once thought to be nasty, such as a beastly-looking aquatic plesiosaur, which may have tasted similar to gamey mild alligator or, uh, if the cavemen were lucky, like turtle. And it says, do yourself a favor and try a turtle soup. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so we can't find any evidence of a creature that's remotely related to that in our environment DNA sequence, the, the professor said of the New Zealand University. So sorry, I don't think the plesiosaur idea holds up. So they did this. What they did is they sampled some of the water in Loch Ness. And they, okay. they separated out the various DNA they found in the water. And due to the fact that they didn't find plesiosaur DNA in the water, they decided, and they did find eel DNA in the water, they decided it was probably a big old eel, and they're, and they're, and they're thinking this would be a very tasty lunch if you uh, wanted to uh, catch one of these eels and eat it. And uh, and I and I, I say bullshit. That, that's 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 yeah, it's bullshit. Yeah, I you know people have been trying to prove make what Nelly or Nettie or whatever Nessie, Nelly Nessie. into something else. Nessie. Nessie, yeah. Nessie, sorry, into something else, and it's like no. And then they're trying to make Bigfoot into something else. And, oh, it's a dude in a costume. It's like no. And then they you know, say they got they got you know, and then oh, the alien. That's just all fucking stage shit. It's like whatever. These are naysayers. <laughs> These are people that want to debunk the the thing or whatever. No way. It, it's just no. It's you know, a, I don't buy into it. And also, it goes on here to say there's no shark DNA in Loch Ness. Based no. on our sampling, there's no catfish no. catfish DNA in Loch Ness. Based on our sampling, we can't find evidence of sturgeon either. Right, what, which what, is an ancient fish, which we have sturgeon here in Eau Claire. What this Scot- illegal to fish for though? It's like whatever. So what this Scottish loch does have, according to researchers, are the highly edible European eels, and they they keep on talking about how tasty. It's not a giant eel, dude. It's no, I, not. It's I, just, not. It, it can't be. <laughs> My point here is they keep on talking about the fact that they want you to eat messy. Right. But it's I came like, a, screw you, dude. But, you but, eat. No, screw you. But I came no across. I wonder why she's so elusive and doesn't want to be like. Yeah. Because you bastards want to eat her. Yeah. But, you want to look like Bigfoot. The bastards want to kill it. But but then I came across. Well, the, they want to kill the Bigfoot. They don't want to fucking make friends with it. But, but, no, they want to kill it so they can examine it. Okay, so so it's, it's like how heartless can you fucking be, dude? Well, I'll you know? tell you, I'll tell you how heartless. I'll tell you how heartless they can be, because okay. I came across this other article on Zero Hedge. Yeah. Swedish behavioral scientists suggest eating humans to save the planet. It, what? What? <laughs> when was what? Is this, is this recent? Yeah, it was today. What? What? Zero hedge. Yeah. Where did, okay. 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 A Swedish behavioral scientist has suggested that it may be necessary to turn to cannibalism. No. And start no. eating humans. That's a whack job. No, start, it's not necessary to do this. Start, people. start eating humans to save the planet. So no. not only they, 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 do they want you to eat Nessie, they want you to eat your neighbor. No. No, this is not good, dude. This is crossing the line, buddy. You're fucking a psycho. Okay. You need to fucking be put in a mental institution, dude. Appearing on Swedish suggesting such a thing. Appearing on Swedish television to talk about an event based around the food of the future, Magnus Soderland said he would be holding seminars on oh the God. on the necessity the, the necessity of consuming human flesh. 
fuck that dude. In order to stop climate change. Um, hello? <laughs> the dude is off his rocker. He's a fucking psychopath, fucking insane person. Now, if, 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 if you ask, if you ask me, attention. if you ask me, and you know, just take a look at Al Gore, I, I think he's been eating people already. Look oh, at him. Well, they do all that spirit cooking and shit. You know, they're all fucking into that dark shit. Al Gore. Al Gore looks like he's eating. Spirit cooking, blood drinking, fucking sick shit. <laughs> right. They're into that shit. Does environmentalists blame the meat and farming industry for a large... Environmentalists are fucking psychopaths. Yes, they are. <laughs> they're insane. Okay. Yeah, so they... Environmentalists are fucking insane. So, so they, right? they, they're blaming... And I love the... I, I'm a part of the Earth Army, okay? But these environmentalist motherfuckers, they are fucking insane, okay? All right, well, according to yeah. Soderlund, a potential fisk, fix would be the soylent green solution of eating dead bodies instead. And I, I guess that's a good thing, at least. He's saying, you know, you wait for them to die, then you eat them. Uh, he's not suggesting maybe you go out and kill them to eat them. Well, at least not yet. Um, but, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my fucking God. <laughs> oh, my fucking God. <laughs> so, so, if you didn't realize how loony these, these frickin', uh, global warming yeah, crazies fucking, are... They are fucking off their goddamn uh, rock. They, they, they're they, fucking they, insane. They, okay? they are. They're insane. They are insane. They are in fucking insane. They, they are... They are ging gang gong de do gong galagaraga. <laughs> oh my fucking god. As is this. Thanks for coming out of this fucking rock this last one. Say this. Billy Strings. Oh hell yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's Tommy Emanuel and Billy motherfucking strings doing the guitar boogie at the Gray Fox. Oh, here earlier, not uh, I think that video just came out earlier this week, August yeah. August twenty sixth. So uh, that's some sweet stuff there. Uh, yeah, be, before that, the Kenny Wayne Shepherd Band uh, covering a "Turn to Stone." Yeah, Wait. yeah, very very nice, very nice man, uh, Kenny yeah. Wayne man. He can play and we kicked it off with uh, Rob uh, motherfucking zombie. Doing a ging gang gong de do gong de la raga raga. <laughs> Let's say it again. Ging gang gong de do gong. I can't. I mess it up every time. <laughs> ah, you know the song. <laughs> uh, what, what, what do you? What, what do you? Oh yeah. Okay, that's what you said. All right. <laughs> oh man, that's that's some great stuff there. Let me tell you. Uh, yeah. Is, man. Great music. Yes, for <laughs> sure. Music is awesome. It music is, man. It's it's, it's, it's powerful. It, 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 it is terrific. Terrific. It is. It's very good. It, like, it, I don't know what I'd do without it, you know. <laughs> I, 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 nor do I. It's, uh, right. It's, a, it's a, So, anyway, this is from Pennsylvania. All right. Sorry. But it applies to uh, most of the country, or well, the Midwest, anywhere that gets snow. Okay. Um, did I just mute? No. Good. Snow overload. Snow expected overload. Expected for winter 2019 to 20, says Old Farmer's Almanac. Okay. So apparently it's going to be a very cold and snowy winter again. Uh-huh. In the East and in the Midwest. Let me just, I know, I, I thought I'd say the story, let me look. I think I do. Da, 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 da. No, I don't have it saved. Anyway, apparently it's going to be a cold and snowy winter again. Oh, yeah. What was I hearing? It's uh, going to be. Uh, it's going to be uh, polar. <laughs> Wait, what was the word they were using? They, call it, they called it. They called it something. Po yeah. Polar. Polar. Po what 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 uh what, what do you call it? Uh, those things uh that you write on 
No, no, what do they call those things? Your roller co- po- polar coaster. Polar coaster. Oh, polar coaster, <laughs> right. That's their new term for this winter coming up now. <laughs> the polar coaster. So apparently that means it's going to be cold and snowy, like a normal winter. Right. But last winter here in Wisconsin was not a normal winter, dude. It wasn't. Like, we literally set a record for the most snow since they've been keeping records in this town, okay? Yeah. And it was 90 inches. No, a polar coaster, Prince. Well, yeah, yeah, right up and down on the polar coaster. A Woohoo! Polar coaster, man. You go zoom, zooming up, zooming man. down. Where you go, man. <laughs> polar coaster, baby. Polar coaster. What's, it, what's, it, what, what's that disco song? Polar coaster. <laughs> 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 Say what? <laughs> Uh, anyway, if you want to know, I mean, the farmer's almanac's pretty good, dude. Yeah, they usually they usually get it they're better pretty, than 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 the rest. Yes, but, they're pretty predict. I mean, they're pretty right on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would like check it out, and you know, hopefully, I mean, if we get another ninety inches of snow winter, I am fucking moving out of Wisconsin. I mean, fuck this. Right, right. I mean, I fucking. Frac- hairline fractured my tailbone last year, which lasted for like four weeks. You know, yeah. It's like, you know, you step outside, you step on ice, and you go right down on your your ass. It fucking hurts, dude. You know? Right. And it's no fun. You can't walk in the shit. No. It's no. Like, so icy. It was like one time it was fifty. It was literally colder here in Eau Claire last year, last winter, than it was on one day than it was in Antarctica. Or Iceland. Or Alaska. Well, it's here. It's coldest here than anywhere else on the planet. Okay, here's a... Here's I'm an, like, here. this is ridiculous. <laughs> you know, I'm like, well, here, here's an article. Here's an article that explains everything. Okay, okay. Everything is bad and the world is ending and you shouldn't have kids. <laughs> says, the party, okay. says the Party of Progress. The United States' birth rate has continued to fall as millennials increasingly believe that everything is bad, the world is going to end, and to bring kids into this nightmarish hellscape would be tantamount to child abuse. Yes, the world is going to end. Wow. In, the, the world is going to end in twelve years. If you have kids, it will probably be like six years or something because oh they'll they'll just breathe more. Alexandria Ocasio Cortez said. On a recent, oh my God, she's what? Uh, oh, crazy, oh. Uh, yeah, oh, crazy, oh. Said on a recent Instagram live broadcast, I have the science right here, oh, crazy, oh, held up a copy of National Geographic. No, oh, National Geographic is science now. She, oh, okay. she, she, she later realized she had been referencing an article from 1989 warning that the world would end in 2001. Oh, my fucking God, really? <laughs> is this an onion story? No, but it's the Babylon Bee. <laughs> I was like, this can't be a real fucking story. She well, can't no. be that stupid. She, she is that stupid. Well, she is, but 1989. <laughs> well, no, they, they absolutely had articles like that in 1989. They had, no, they had articles warning against global cooling back in the 70s. Look well, it up, people. Right, you know, right. right. But, but they, 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 they would say this. Global, that they were worried about global cool, cooling, like the next, next ice age was going to happen or something. And now it's re- totally reversed. <laughs> like, what well, the fuck, motherfuckers? Anyway, it's a funny article. It's a funny read. Here's, here's the link for it for, for you guys so you can read I, it. I call, hey, you didn't fool me that time, Graham. I'm getting better <laughs> picking these, these fucking satire stories out. you got to admit, I'm getting better. I'm like, is this the onion? <laughs> well, they won't be the same. Basically, it's the same kind of fight. Oh, yeah, the bee is hilarious. Yeah, uh, it they, is they, 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 they crack. The stories are good. Like, but, they're, they're satire, they're parody, but, you they, know, they, it's like comedy. Well, they, they crack me up on a regular. Well, speaking of the bee, right. speaking yeah. of the bee, um, and not the bee at the same time, um, <laughs> l- let me, let me, let's quit moving around on me here. Uh, where, where'd that go now? Uh, there. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, okay. Not the bee, Daily Mail. And okay. You, I, I'm sure you've heard about. It's not a parody site. But a, people don't like it, but I get it. But they okay. do get good stories on there, okay. good pictures. So not a parody story. 
right. Walmart is to stop selling ammunition for yeah. assault rifles and handguns and will ban customers from openly carrying guns in its stores I in the, saw that. In, I the saw wake, that. in the wake of the deadly mass shooting. Not a satire piece. They they said it, they mean it, they they they're determined to do that. Uh, the Walmart CEO announced the changes uh, in a memo on Tuesday. He said that he felt the company had to do its part to uh, make the country safer. On August 3rd, it talks about the guy who killed 22 people in Walmart in El Paso. Uh, days earlier, disgruntled employee shot two people in a different store in Mississippi. Uh, well, Mich yeah, it makes sense. You know, I mean, when I heard about the shootings at Walmart, I was huh. like, that makes total sense because... Walmart is fucking huge, dude. Okay. And so, if you want to make a point, you do something at Walmart. So, you know? so that's what Walmart said. And yep. then, as you said, to make a point, the Babylon Bee says, Walmart discontinues auto part sales to prevent car accidents. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> in, a, in a bold move intended to curb thousands of deaths from vehicles each and every day, Walmart has decided to stop selling auto parts, sources confirmed. According to shocking reports, people have been have purchased car parts at Walmart, and then those cars have been involved in accidents, proving a direct correlation between selling auto parts and causing deaths. We can no longer be complicit in an industry that kills over 3,000 people a day, said a spokesperson for Walmart. Every time we sell a muffler, steering wheel cover, or flame decal, we are potentially causing the death of a person, and we cannot support that any longer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just them make poking fun at Walmart for, for, I mean, they're ridiculous at not selling ammo anymore. Uh, and, and also, already in, in New Mexico, they don't sell guns at all. Um which I guess they still do in other stores, but uh, but they're no they're no longer going to sell the ammo. So poking fun at Walmart, the, the Babylon Bee says uh, they are also not going to sell auto parts because just as bullets can kill people, your cars kill more people than your bullets do. So um, a lot more, by the way. Um, <laughs> uh, and their number of killing over three thousand people a day is an accurate number. Uh, in, in your auto accident, so uh, you want to you want to stop people from killing people, then you have to ban cars rather than guns. Right. <laughs> right. So <laughs> uh, anyway, so that's you know proving a point uh, through yeah. humor. Um, the bee does it again. Okay. <laughs> uh, it says that Walmart executives say they are beating themselves with a stick to atone for the deaths of uh, they've already caused. Right. Our, con our consciences will only be clean. They're trying to fucking make up for it that the shooting, some shootings happened in their stores and shit. Our consciences will only be clean yeah. when we've been mercilessly, mercilessly beaten once for each of the millions of deaths that have been caused by automobiles since Walmart began selling auto parts. <laughs> I know! It's crazy! It's so, just insane! Well, Walmart, this is, this is uh, insanity, people! Walmart, I don't know what the answer is, but stop complying. Stop shopping at fucking Walmart. Like I did. I had to. I had to. Because... R right. Gotta, every time I buy potatoes, for, oh, go ahead, Graham. Right, Goober. Uh, I'll just agree. Goobers points out that they just aren't ordering new ammo. They right. will. They're they will sell what they have. Yeah, and they'll, be done. they'll sell whatever they have on hand and, and that. Right. right. Uh, but but as I said, in New Mexico, because of some kind of, uh, I think it was a background check law they passed mm -hmm. here, uh, uh, that that they quit selling guns here altogether. So. Um, if the national background check that Trump wants goes into war place, they'll probably quit selling guns every on all their stores. Right. So, uh, because like well, I said, I they did it here that, already. Yeah, no, but I was saying, so I was shopping at Walmart for the longest time for groceries because they supposedly have the lowest prices, which they don't, I have found out. So, the potatoes 
at Walmart, okay? Yeah. Usually at Woodman's, I buy potatoes that are grown in Wisconsin, right? Right. Kitchen clean. They're like the best potatoes in the goddamn world, right? Oh, yeah. Like just about, you know? Yeah. Anyway, so Walmart sells their brand. And I swear to God, these potatoes go bad like two weeks after you, or like a week after you get them, or ten days. And it's like, what is with these Walmart potatoes? And then when you go to peel them, the ones that are still good or whatever, yeah, they're rotten inside. Well, they're, they're probably Chinese potatoes or something. Yeah, and it's like, you know what? I am done with Walmart because you know what? I've I've had it. Like the potatoes have pissed me off for the last fucking time because you know when a potato goes bad in the bag, yeah. Stinks really fucking bad. Oh sure they do. Yeah, they're, they're like it stinks really fucking bad. They're, they're nasty. And I'm just like, why is the potatoes going bad so fast? Yeah. You know, but the kitchen clean ones that are from Wisconsin, those will last two months. Yeah. Without I, going bad. You I, know what it, I mean? When I want certain things like uh, potatoes, yeah. t- pota- tomatoes, corn, uh, pinto beans, I go to the Moriarty Foods, which is right here in town. Okay, and all that yep. stuff is grown in Moriarty. Right. And that's the best thing you can do is buy local food. And speaking of Moriarty grown stuff. Right. This article from uh, KRQE.com. Okay. McCall's named one of the best pumpkin patches in America. Wow. So is that Mo- New Moriarty? Yeah, Moriarty, New Mexico. Oh, cool. New Mexico. New Mexico, oh, cool. New Mexico Farm is being recognized for having one of the best pumpkin patches in America. McCall's Pumpkin Patch in Moriarty awesome. ranked number seven on a list of 33 farms. Sweet. Uh, is Wisconsin on the list? Oh, it, it, I didn't even click through to the list. Let me oh, see. I think I'm sure it is because, I mean, people like the one guy in New Richmond grew, like a, had like a 1,500-pound pumpkin or something, or some like outrageously high Weighted pumpkin, like they they grow them. Like there's certain seeds, they're giant pumpkin seeds. You can actually buy them. They're like special seeds to grow a giant pumpkin. Yeah. And so in Wisconsin, we have contests. Like actually, they're having a they're, they're going to have like the the contest here in Altoona this year. Right. So it's going to be. I'm going to go because these giant. You, just, you can't believe your eyes when you see these giant pumpkins, dude. They're fucking like it's one thing to see a picture. But it's another thing for like the pumpkin to be taller than you. Oh, I mean, yeah. it's insane, dude. It's 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 really fucking something that they can grow such big fucking pumpkins, you know? Yeah. So that's cool. So Moriarty must be good pumpkin growing. Oh yeah, McCall's has always been huge. Well, on the you list. should have good luck with your melons and squash and shit next year. Well, they have, they have, I'm sure they have different dirt than I do, but I, I will be right. having better dirt next year. But, yes, um, yes. But you, you should do. The raised bed type, so you don't have to do, you're not putting dirt on the ground, you're putting it in a container type thing. Well, I'm thinking about that, or the buckets, or the bags. Right, the buckets for potatoes, the buckets would be good. The buckets sure. or bags, or, uh, there's various right. different ways of doing it. Um, yeah. I, I was just yeah. thinking of mulching it into the, the regular dirt. You right, know. you could do that, but that's about, a lot of work. I mean, it depends on how big your garden is. I mean, if it's yeah. a smaller one, it wouldn't be impossible. You know, you know? like 10 by, 10 by 20. Something like that. Yeah, it's, that's it's, what that means. No, I mean you can. You I mean, can it'll be that. the same. It'll be the same size as if I did a raised one. Right, um, exactly. So you can handle that. I mean, it's just I think you would need more dirt though if you're actually going to go from the ground. Well, I'm um, I'm doing I'm doing the uh, what do you call it the uh, the uh, mulching? No, not mulching. Uh, the mulching. Okay, the no, composting. Composting. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, good. Okay, did you just start doing it? Like, do you have a, a actual? Did you just put it out in the open? Yeah, with a big pile. Like a container. I'm, I'm, no, I'm doing a pile. Okay, that that works too. Yeah. If you've got the space for it and stuff, yeah, yeah. that works. And and I've been saving all the all the uh, food garbage, you know the. Right. Not not me. And you know you can put leaves and shit in there. Oh yeah, all all kinds of various. And yeah. I, and yeah. I, I, I grow. Coffee filters. Coffee I, filters. I grow. A, I, I grow. I grow a lot of weeds. I don't use coffee filters, but. Oh uh, okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, and even eggshells. Yeah, eggshells, banana. Yeah. Yep. Uh, potatoes, banana. Uh, uh, potato peels are great. Like even leftover mashed potatoes can be composted. Yeah, banana peels. Uh, banana peels all, are great. Yep. All, all, all kinds of stuff. Anything, anything that's anything organic, anything that's not meat. Basically. Right. All the all the plant based yep. stuff and, and anything plant based plus leaves, plus, weeds. Yeah, yeah. that that, know, that all goes yeah. in there. That all goes in there. So. Yep, it's uh, awesome. It's an awesome process, actually. It's really kind of cool, you know. It's like Mother Nature at work. Like, it's, you know. Yeah. 
It's it's just it, I think it's really fascinating. You know, I, it's, I, I it's just I need to get me a black dirt from that stuff. You know, I, I, mean? I need to, I need to get me a pitchfork. You know, but uh, right, right. You you'll buy your certain garden tools that you need. You know, right, right. So anyway, yeah. that's fun. Um, by the way, uh, I don't know if I mentioned to you or not, but uh, I have a uh, a sunflower plant growing. No, yeah, I think you mentioned that, but that's awesome. Is it a giant one or is it a regular size? It's about four to five feet tall right now. Yeah. Wow. Nice. Um, and the and flower itself, though, is that a big flower? Well, it, the first of... one, no, the first one just opened, so okay. it's, oh, they're, cool. they're just in that process of opening. Oh, beautiful! But Take the, pictures. The one on the very top just started opening. You can see all the seeds in there. Um. So I guess I'll have some sunflower seeds. Yeah. Um. Yeah, the nu- they're nuclear pumpkins, exactly, Hansel. <laughs> no, they're not. That's supposed to be us. Because there's certain different seeds, and a lot of farmers in Wisconsin, like there used to be a guy in Dunn County that had his pumpkin field right on, like you could see it from the freeway from 94. Yeah. And I swear to God, the one year, this was like four years ago, he had this fucking giant-ass pumpkin up there. The thing looked like fake. It looked fake. It was so big, dude. Right. I know, I know. Seriously, these things get big. Well, I, I expect, you know, if I go down to down to McCall's pumpkin patch, I'll see Linus down there. Yeah, you sh- yeah probably. He'll yeah. be down there with his blanket, you know. He will be. Because that's a great <laughs> pumpkin. It does exist. The great pumpkin does exist. But speaking of nuclear stuff. Okay. From... Amp.hothardware.com. Military tech expert suggests the United States should give AI control of nuclear warfare button. All right. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> so, yeah, you, you remember the movie War Games, right? Yes. Yeah. Of yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. Anyway, uh, many of the nuclear deterrent strategies the United States has today were developed during the Cold War era when military officials had significant time to detect an incoming nuclear attack and decide a course of action for response. This mutually assured destruction worked in that an enemy with nuclear weapons knew the U.S. would have time to fire its own nuclear response at them uh, and neither would survive the outcome. Oh, that's terrific, isn't it? Uh, anyway, however, tech, uh, technology marches on and times have changed with potential enemy forces around the globe making significant upgrades to nuclear arsenals. Upgrades such as hypersonic cruise missiles and other types of missiles that are difficult to detect. One type of hypersonic cruise missile gives the U.S. military only six minutes of lead time to detect an incoming attack, devise a plan, and launch a counterattack. The fear is that America's aging nuclear command and control system, known as NC-3, might not offer U.S. leaders the time they have, uh, they need to detect an incoming attack and decide on a response before American lives are at risk in a surprise attack. However, there are options in the U.S., uh, which has for escaping the compressed timescales that modern nuclear war would impose. And one of them is artificial intelligence. <laughs> I don't need to go on uh, with this, no. but um, the, the thing is, don't do it. <laughs> did, did, did you all <laughs> right? Did, did you all not 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 see uh, the Terminator? Do don't you, do, do it. Do you know not know what happens when Skynet comes online? <laughs> 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 because uh, yeah, all of the all of the all of the computers around the world on the AI decide that well we understand what the what the what real danger is here, and it's the humans. So we'll just nuke the whole world. That'll take care of all the humans, and and when we'll be live happily ever after as computers. Um, yeah. So no, we that. Um, <laughs> Yeah. No. <laughs> you know what someone should do though? What? Like I've never seen this. I think someone should take one of them giant pumpkins and actually carve the motherfucker and make a giant jack o' lantern out of it. Like that, I think should be done. Oh, absolutely. I'm gonna try to find a farmer that grows these motherfuckers and say, "Hey, dude, you know, why don't you go a step above and actually carve the motherfucker and make a giant jack o' lantern?" That's a good idea. 
Right. I mean, I, it's probably been done, maybe, I, but uh, not, in my, not in my lifetime that I'm, I've known of, you know. Right. And I'm over 50, so, you know, I think that's a challenge out there. I'm putting a challenge sure. out there. Ma- oh, imagine, oh, imagine how... a giant pumpkin and make a giant jack-o'-lantern on uh, it. Imagine how many pies you could get out of one of those. Right. You know, <laughs> with a thumb being a jack-o'-lantern, you can make pies. Right, right. right. <laughs> Three pies, or a no, hundred pies. Oh, well, Easily. Easily, yeah. yeah. Oh, we easily, said yes, we did. We both said easily. I know, I know. All right, I'm gonna play. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna play some more music here. You start saying it, you can't stop saying it. It's weird. Okay, I'm gonna play some more music here. All right, uh, let's the, do that. The, the first, the first song I'm gonna play is by the Hollies. It's called "Long Cool Woman Ooh. in a Black yeah, Dress." I like this song. Okay, I've listened to that song hundreds of times. Yeah, me too. "Long Cool Woman," I'd never got. Close to having the lyrics right. Okay. This this vi- yeah. this video has the lyrics on screen. And okay. Cool. You read sit here. Watch it then. Yeah. Wa- watch this video. I read the lyrics, go. and you go. That's what they're saying. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I had no idea that that was what this song. Well, was, whoops. What I said. Quiet there, video. All right. Uh, so <laughs> here you go. The Hollies. Long Cool Woman in a Black Dress. It's a static image, but you get the lyrics on the screen. So read these and you go, wow, I never do. Give a big hand for the band. Come on. Mike Michelle, Nicholas D'Amato on the bass. Steve Holly on the drums. I'm Papa Chubby. Yeah, Papa Chubby. <laughs> Yeah, it's Papa Jimmy there doing If the Diesel Don't Get Ya in the Jet Fuel Wheel over there in France back in 2004. Before that, the Jeff Healy Band doing While My Guitar Gently Weeps and oh, Shredding It and Montreux back in 1997. And we kicked it off there with the Hollies, Long Cool Woman in a Black Dress with the lyrics there on the screen. Um... Yeah, I never knew. I never knew that's what that song was all about. <laughs> wow. FBI dude and, and yeah. people with guns, bar, bar shooting, fight there. <laughs> and it's like, I, I just thought it was a song about a woman in a black dress. Yeah. Uh, and I, did, I, I had no idea all this other stuff was going on there. That <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. This is so, big. yeah. I mean, there's going to be a, a pumpkin festival. Quick, in cool. Altoona. Altoona, huh? Yeah, it's right next to Eau Claire. Okay. There's an Altoona, Pennsylvania, but this is Altoona, Wisconsin. All right, all right. And it's gonna be, you know, I'm gonna, I might go, I might go check it out. Like, you know, Whoa. they're gonna have like a pumpkin way off and shit. They're gonna have vendor market and food trucks. I mean, a concert. I mean, come on, it's gonna be a good time. Okay. And here we go. I mean, if you look at that link that I just posted, they show you the various fruit records from fall of 2018 from Wisconsin. Okay. So last year, there was the, the giant, the biggest pumpkin was 283 pounds. I mean, 2,283. That's that's a lot of that's a lot of pumpkin. That's fucking big. Yeah. And if you look <laughs> at that, you'll see like the previous years. But those are some big motherfucking pumpkins, people. Hell yeah. You know, so, Grim, I think you should actually go and do, like, some video footage of the Moriarty pumpkin, the, the famous Moriarty pumpkin field. You think so, huh? Yeah, I think you should go there, you know, just for, like, five minutes or ten minutes and just take some footage and just post it. You know, you don't have to go roam around or anything or interact with people, you know. You can just go there and take pictures and, you know. All right. Well, or well, something, you know, is it, like, how close is it to you? Like, can you see this place from your house? No, but, you know, it's more... Okay, area. well, it's like enough, obviously there's acreage and shit where they're at, you know. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, it's just an idea. You know, if you've never seen a giant pumpkin, you should actually, you should probably go see that. Just to cross it off your bucket list. Okay. You know, okay. you have a bucket list. Everyone has a bucket list, dude. Of things they want to do before they're like not here anymore. I don't really right? have one. No, I'm done. I'm I'm finished. Well, I'm, I do. I mean, like some friends of mine I'm tonight ready. went to the Who concert. Like, 
that's not on my bucket list. Seeing the Who live is on my fucking bucket list, dude. Like, I'm so jelly. Oh, okay. Like, I'm happy for them because I got to see, like, Pete Townsend and shit. Yeah. You know, but it's like, dude, I want to see that band. You know, <laughs> there's so many shows in so little time, but wouldn't it be, have you seen the Who live? Um, no, I saw the Stones, though. Yeah, see, I haven't seen the Stones live either. Well, I saw the Stones in 80, 1980, I think. Wow. Wow. Somewhere. I was still in high school. It was was some... that like the one with the tongue sticking out? What was that Well, that, they always had that. It was a Some Girls tour. Some Girls. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's an awesome album. Uh, it's, it's a good I love one. that. That's like my favorite Stones album, dude. It's the one where they got all the girls in the wigs and shit, and then they have their pictures on some of them. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I have a copy of that. I have that in vinyl. I do. I have that on vinyl. Okay. And I, 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 I saw it like somewhere wherever I saw it. I probably creamed my jeans a little bit. <laughs> but I saw it because I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe I saw this album oh, like, oh. on vinyl. Like I was freaking out. Like I was like, this is awesome. Like that was a good day. You know? I mean, fucking a, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good fucking day. To find that, because that's, that's the album that I remember the most from my childhood. Like, that's the one that really introduced me to the Stones, you know what I mean? Oh, okay. And then, okay. I started, then I started hearing, I mean, like, I'd always heard their older stuff, like, when I was a kid, you know? Yeah. Like, some girls, what what year was that? I don't know, it was like 78 or 78, I don't know. It must have been an 80, sometime right around 80. It yeah. must have been an 80, but I was, no, it had to have been seven, late, oh, look at them, oh, look at them. Yeah. Anyway, um, since we're yeah. talking about pumpkins, yes, I thought this might be might be fitting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he laughed. It, it, I love when he laughs before it, he tells the story. It, it's not an onion piece. It's not a Babylon. It's not. It's not a satire piece at all. Okay. Okay. Thank you for pointing that out. Washington Post, but this is posted on TruePundit.com. dot com. Okay. Washington Post says. Pumpkin spice lattes connected to war, genocide, and slavery. They're serious. That's what they're saying. <laughs> Star Starbucks pumpkin spice latte is already back in stores. And in honor of the drink's annual arrival last Tuesday, the Washington Post published a bizarre piece alerting readers of the violent history behind your fav what? your favorite Starbucks latte. Reason? I'm getting there. What? I'm getting there. Oh, my God. Okay. So Washington Post published this thing alerting people of the violent history behind your, va your favorite Starbucks latte, which reportedly includes war, genocide, and slavery. Pumpkin spice latte is back, so it's its connection to centuries-old genocide, writes uh, Jillian Brockle of the Washington Post, underneath those fuzzy sweater vibes, the spices of the pumpkin spice latte have a dark history. That's uh, bullshit. It's a story of war, genocide, and slavery. Uh, what? The, 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 the wa <laughs> what, though? You're not getting the, the reason uh, why they're there. insane. I'm getting there. The, the waffle piece begins briefly touching upon the history of an ingredient found in the public spice latte, nutmeg, which is native to Banda Islands, today's Indonesia, and which made the Bandanese who traded the spices during uh, uh, traded the spices rich during the Middle Ages. Uh, Brockell's <laughs> history lesson then segues into the late. This is reaching. This is stretching. The, the <laughs> late 16th and early 17th centuries right. to divulge European explorers oh arriving on on the islands, which reportedly resulted in war, slavery, and the near extinction of the Budanese or Bandanese. So if you whatever. So if you drink these pumpkin spice lattes, well, oh first God. off. First off, you got a problem. That's I can't even. Well, yeah. If, first off, uh, if you go to Starbucks, period. Yeah, I, I can't even you begin. You have a problem. I, I okay. can't. Yeah. If so you're um, overpaying for this <laughs> foo foo fucking shit that they have there. All right, don't go there. That's my. Advice. <laughs> Just don't go there. Like I've been to. I don't think I've even been to one Starbucks. Like, ever. I've been to one. I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been to, to one, I've been, one time when my kids were like ten. I've been to the one in Santa Fe, and I and I 
I, and I ordered a coffee, a regular coffee. Yeah. And it was like four bucks or something, you know, for like, what the fuck? for a regular freaking coffee. It better be fucking have gold. No, it, it, it tasted like dirt. I mean, it was burnt. Yeah, and, it's, it's not good. It's like <laughs> so over fucking rated. It's not even funny, and it's overpriced, and it's fucking bullshit. Horrible, oh, horrible. I'm not gonna order coffee. I want an espresso. It's like fuck you, you fucking arrogant prick. You need some espresso with some goddamn whipped cream on it. Oh, yeah, like you're special. Dude, because you drink special coffee doesn't make you special, all right? Yeah. You're stupid for overpaying for your goddamn frou-frou coffee drinks, motherfucking dumbass. Yeah. Jesus Christ. It's like you can make your own shit at home for, like, 50 cents <laughs> a day or something. You know? Yeah, whatever. I mean, you know, I make a whole pot, and it's, you know, like... Uh, right. I mean... Three three tablespoons like, of coffee. This fancy frou-frou coffee is, like... I don't get it. Like, I do not go to these places. I If I do get co- buy coffee from outside my house, right. it's that quick trip. Or holiday. The convenience store. So they have just as good coffee, dude. And they get all the fucking... You can put all these things, they have all these flavorings you can put in. They get all these different flavored creamers. It's like, yeah, man, it's so much better. Than, and it's like $3 less or $5 less than Starbucks coffee. All right, this and next also, article, this next article is I would one. say ban Starbucks. I, I seriously, if, if I, I well, just think Starbucks is fucking bad news, dude. Yeah, well, whatever. If people want to go there, let yeah. them go there. I don't give a fuck. Right, yeah, fuck them stupid fuckers. <laughs> Anyway, this this next article is one you may want to share with a friend. Okay. A rat study finds that <laughs> acupuncture can treat alcohol addiction. Ooh. In rats. That's good to know. In it can ra- treat a lot of things, but that's good that it can also treat that. In rats. <laughs> right, in rats, but, you know, he's not, uh, the person's not far from that. But. Yeah. Anyway, it just says lab animals are, are used to all sorts of bizarre <laughs> experiments. Uh, but, yeah. but this study this week is definitely one for the scrapbook. A team of researchers in Korea and the United States got rats addicted to alcohol, then attempted to alleviate... Nice people. What the fuck? Uh, sick well, fuckers. That's what they do. Uh, yeah, then attempted to alleviate their withdrawal symptoms using <laughs> acupuncture. Fucking and the co- According to their data, the treatment was fairly successful. But there's more than a few reasons to be skeptical of ac- ac- acupuncture's healing power when it comes to addiction. Uh, according to the study published in the Science Advances on Wednesday, the researchers first trained the rats to use a lever that would give them a water laced with alcohol, then got half of the rats hooked on alcohol by feeding it to them for 16 days. Whatever, that's while, stupid. While, while the other half served as a control, the next day the rats were left without alcohol for two hours, enough time for them to start experiencing withdrawal symptoms, including tremors and anxiety, the shakes, you know. Uh, some of the rats were given acupuncture, getting a tiny needle placed in their wrist, a position mm-hmm. called Shen Men Heart 7 or HT7. Uh, the authors found that the alcohol-dependent rats, given the acupuncture of HT7, were less likely to experience withdrawal symptoms than those not given it. So... Um, you know, whatever. It's worth a shot for some alcoholics you may know uh, to get them maybe to break their habit, uh, get them off of the alcohol. Um, it's basically it's treating the, 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 the withdrawal symptoms and not the core cause of their alcoholism in the first place. Um, so that's something. Yeah. Uh, huh. Well, so, I mean, I think a lot of things can heal addiction. The main thing being the desire to want to not be that way. A lot That's of things. The number one thing that you have to have in order to heal from any addiction, the desire to change. A, a lot of things can cure addictions and fix yes. other problems, such right. as magic mushrooms. Yes, magic yes. mushrooms for sure have been proven that they cure depression. And now in Canada. You can buy magic mushrooms from a dispensary. Yes. Uh, what? You can buy the magic mushrooms from a dispensary. Good. 
Oh, man, I'm taking a vacation to Canada soon. Well, it's only if it's one guy, so uh, don't get too excited. Oh, okay. But so, you need to fucking do that, like, once a year. Like, uh, it, 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 it... It's it's not forever. Like you can't do mushrooms once and go. Oh, my depression is cured. Right. You have to do them like once a year, or once every couple of years. Like have a really good trip, yeah. and then you'll be good for a while. Then you have to do it again, like a couple of years later. Right. And it's not a big deal. No. I mean, it's anyway, the, it's from, fun. From you'll the laugh ar- your ass off. From the I mean, from laughter. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was just saying from the article here, which is posted on the Waking Times, but is from the Free Thought Project. It says for years. Cool. For years, the Free Thought Project has been reporting on the beneficial effects of psilocybin mushrooms, ranging from treating PTSD to addiction to depression. In the right. land, in the land of the free, however, in all yeah, right. uh, in all places except for Oakland and Denver, cops will kidnap and cage you exactly. for having them, but they not you. not they in Canada. You. Not in Canada, where the brave and inspiring, disobedient cannabis dispensary owner is changing nice. the paradigm. Uh, awesome. Da- Dana Larson knows he is not the first person to sell magic mushrooms online. What city, Graham? I'm getting there. Oh, Psil- sorry. Okay. Ps- psilocybin has long been available on the dark web, and the non-psychoactive spores can be used to cultivate your own psychedelic mushrooms in your closet are readily available for multiple online jobs. Yes, Get spores, and you can grow your own mushrooms. However, until now, we we couldn't think of anyone who's publicly put their face out there as the source. Um, No, this is awesome. I thought it said what city he was in. Anyway, his name is Larson. It's Toronto, Montreal, Quebec. It's got to be Vancouver, maybe. Yeah. Anyway, you could... Here's here's a link to the article. You could find it for yourself. Okay, cool. If it's in there. Um, nice. So, yeah, check it out. Uh, oh, Vancouver, Vancouver. Okay, so Vancouver. That's, Would, pretty, that's where weed's legal. Like, yeah. they can grow well, weed there. Weed, weed's weed. legal all across it's Canada. Really fine. Weed is legal all across Canada. All over. Okay, all over. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Since October of last year. Right. Yep. All right. Well, we got to do our last little set here. All right then. And Let's hear it. We're gonna kick it off with hey, a. I just want to say, Grim. I yeah. just want to say one thing. Some girls. Is 1978. 78. Okay. Well, that might have been when it was. I, I was thinking 80, but it could have been 78. It was. That it the was con- I mean, it's, uh, that the, con- <laughs> the, the concert I saw him in. So. Yeah. All yeah. right then. All right. So anyway, so I was uh, 12. I was 12 when that album came out. Yeah, I was 18. <laughs> there you Se- go. 17 There's or 18. There's a difference right there. <laughs> yeah, 17 or 18. Anyway, this right. is a uh, Prince request. Yes. Awesome. Ha! <laughs> Black Betty! <laughs> Christopher Amoroso there doing Black Betty. Uh, that's a great version. I love that version. Uh, before that, a Kate request there. Miss Kate request. Uh, a mashup. Dire Straits and Smokey Robinson and the Miracles doing... Uh, money for shopping. <laughs> yeah, that's a great matchup. Uh, and we kicked it off there with Gogol Bardello, uh, live from Axis Mundi. Dogs were barking. <laughs> yes. Good stuff. Yeah. All right, folks. Um, All right, then. Have a good weekend. I, I, there's no dark table as far as I know tomorrow, unless somebody wants to step up and do it. Because anybody can do it. Wake up. I mean, I might be willing to do it, but I just got to make sure I get up in the morning, you know. I mean, right, right, right. But anybody can do it. I might do it. You know, you and Vinny, whoever wants to, yeah, anyone wants to step Europe, up and do it, you know, feel free. Fire and shit. So anyway, I'll I'll be yeah yeah. Vinny knows how to run a show. Um, yeah. Uh, I'll be on on uh, Sunday at noon Eastern with the Blues. We'll be playing the trivia. All that fun stuff. Uh, then Hal Anthony comes on at 3 p.m. Eastern with Behind the Widget, opening up the can of whoop-ass. And uh, again, I'll be back on Monday evening uh, with Grim yeah. Leftovers at 7 p.m. Right. And uh, Yes, we did say that very much, Vinny. 
Yeah, yeah, well, that's right. It was, many, I'm not going to say it now, but we did say that word many times. We, we easily said it ten times. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> and you're supposed to keep track of that, uh, not us. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. It's up to you to keep track of how many times we yeah. say it. You're the yeah. one who likes it. That's right. All right, y'all have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you later. Peace.